Hi everyone, my name is Martin Ockström. I'm uh, part of the CTO NSO team. I've been working with NSO since late 2014 when I initially joined the TaleF team. Uh, most of my time I've been working close with, with customers and users, both in, in, in sales roles and in, in the BU. For the last year or so, I've been having a main focus on the migration to NSO 5 uh, and, and trying to find uh, good paths for, for users to migrate from the current installation to NSO 5 and also trying to identify what has changed and, and what needs to be changed in, in customer environments, for example. So, There are, of course, things that has changed. Uh, it's not major, but, but some, some, some of the things will change on how you handle your services and, and uh, how you interact with the devices southbound of NSO. And that's uh, what I will focus mostly on today. The main thing that makes those changes is the common data model. The common data model basically means that from now we can handle multiple revisions of the same Yang model in NSO. And that of course means that we can have multiple versions of a NED if we need to handle different uh, device ver software versions uh, southbound in the network. This of course drives some changes in the API. Uh, our services and the service templates needs to be able to handle multiple versions uh, our service code needs to be able to handle multiple versions of NEDs. Uh, and I will try to focus a little bit on <coughs> those changes and, and uh, how you can work with those um, both in, in, in uh, operating the whole network and in your services. I will not dive into new functionality and features other than that in NSO. Uh, there are, of course, lots of new uh, functionality and features that you should look at and that really will help you uh, but i will focus mostly on this where we have changes that might change the way you work with nso uh, so let's start with cdm and what that actually means common data model uh, as i said is uh, the implementation that makes nso able to load multiple versions of a yang module into the system Traditionally, this was not something NSO could do. We can only have one version of a Yang model loaded in the system at a time. And this had limitations, of course. Uh, if we have multiple devices using different revisions of the same Yang module, NSO can only load one of those modules. And if we had incompatible parts in that module between those versions, uh, then NSO couldn't properly handle those incompatible parts. Or it might be a case where NSO loads a module where you want to use on the device as well, like the AAA module or something like that. And if it's already loaded in NSO, you can't use it on the device. This is solved by, by the common data model by implementing a technique called Yang Schema Mount. Uh, so Yang Schema Mount means that modules are from a device are mounted into the device tree in NSO. Each mounted data model is separated from each other. So you might, in, in many cases, you might have uh, multiple devices using the same software version in a network that is managed by NSO, uh, just using the same Yang module version. Um, and all Yang modules needed to handle a device are contained in a package called a network element driver. And that's, that's the package responsible for handling the southbound communication towards the devices. So if we have a bunch of devices where the modules are updated, but they are all, all the same version, we simply need to uh, update our NED package with those modules, reload and be good to go because all the changes are backwards compatible. However, if we have a few of those devices uh, where the models are updated with, with uh, backwards incompatible uh, changes. It's necessary to create a new neg NED package for that particular set of modules. Uh, before CDM, this was, of course, impossible. Um, 
since two different packages uh, couldn't have different versions of the same module in them. Uh, but now that is sold. And this has other side effects, for example, from now on, you don't need to upgrade the whole network in one go when you have the need for a new uh, net version. We can simply install the new net versions for those particular devices that needs it and handle the rest at a later time when it's more suitable. Uh, or perhaps you want to stay at a certain version or so. A Yang module is identified by its namespace. Uh, now with, with, with CDM, that namespace is defined from the mount ID and the XML namespace of the module. Uh, this is referred to as a crunched namespace. Uh, so, and Yang schema mount uh, introduces a mount point uh, under where Yang models are mounted. In NSO, we define two such Yang uh, mount points. Uh, we have devices device config and devices device live status. And from now also, the NED ID is mandatory. Each NED needs to provide a unique NED ID, because that NED ID is also the mount ID used by Yang, Yang Schema Mount while doing this crunch namespace. Uh, but this also means that now we, we see them when we traverse uh, over a mount point in NSO, NSO will internally look up the NED ID for that specific device instance and resolve any ambiguities in the module name uh, or an XML namespace. Uh, so there's no user code needed to handle this. This is handled completely internally in, in NSO. And the NED ID is basically what makes uh, NED package completely unique. It, it consists of, of uh, a device uh, type, uh, what sort of device it is, and, and the version. So it could be like router dash NC, which stands for netconf, and the version number. And if we have multiple versions of that NED, of course, we can just change the version number, but still keep the NED ID completely unique across the whole system. So now with the ability to have multiple versions of NEDs, uh, the procedure to uh, upgrade a NED is of course a little bit different compared to before. Now it's just not a simple package reload anymore. Now we'll drop the next NED version uh, in the package folder and uh, reload that one. So for the devices, we need to uh, choose and control how and when we migrate between them. So we will do a migration from uh, version A to version B on a particular set of devices in a much more controlled way, uh, where we have a big chance of doing a, a structure analysis of which path that has changed and which potential impact this might have on the service code. So this tool is implemented as an action in the device tree. So you have device migrate, uh, where you can change uh, a, a NED version on all or a few devices at the same time. Um, so this action doesn't require NSO to go in upgrade mode. Uh, nor does it affect the actual network uh, device uh, in any other way than, than possibly reading some data from it. So this means that uh, migrating from, from versions to another version uh, can be done outside the scope of a re regular service window and during normal operations, since we can also choose which devices or uh, how many devices and, and, and what will happen during this. Uh, so here you have an example of, of um, doing the migration. We, we try to uh, migrate from uh, on this particular device. We do a migrate to the new NED ID, which is router NC 1.1. And we can do this verbose. 
So this, this action migrates all configuration and service metadata. And as a side effect, it will also read and commit the actual configuration uh, to the device configuration. Uh, so this action can be executed in, in parallel on a device group or on all devices matching a certain net identity. It will report, as you can see here, the path where that has been modified and which services are affected by that change. Uh, using the verbose option will also show uh, services affected with changes and also just yes, all services that are affected uh, by doing a migration here. Uh, an affected service might not be critical in, in that sense. It might just be that we know that if we do this migration, we will touch devices that these the service instances also have uh, configuration on. Uh, we can do this also as a dry run. And if we do a dry run, nothing will happen, but the migrate action will simply report uh, which services will be affected and, and uh, the modified paths in that. And it gives us a great chance to do a structured analysis of uh, how and which services we actually need to change before we do this. And we can do this in a controlled manner before we do the real production migration. So, Migration between different versions is only necessary when we change uh, which net maintenance branch we are on. Uh, as, as long as all the changes in, in, the, in the net are backwards compatible, it's the regular way as we used to. We will drop, remove the old package, drop the new package and do a package reload and we will move from, let's say, 5.8.1 to 5.8.2. But if we change from the branch 5.8 to 5.9, that also means that there are backwards incompatible changes happening in the system or in the net, uh, and we need to do a migration. So in this case, we will drop the new net uh, side by side with the old net and use the migrate tool to migrate to this next version of this net. So as mentioned, uh, the advantage of, of using this met method of, of um, upgrading uh, NEDs or migrating NEDs in new versions is that we are more in control. We can choose which part of the network we will actually upgrade. We don't have to do the whole network at once. You can choose a particular set uh, device group or just a few devices. Uh, we can, of course, choose all matching net IDs uh, from the old one. Um, and since we don't need to be in the traditional maintenance windows doing this, it can be done in a very lazy manner over a long period of time. So we don't have to do this in a, uh, in a one hour maintenance windows doing a package reload where we have no control of what actually happens uh, when we drop the new net in the, in the package folder. Now we can analyze what has changed. We can choose to do it step by step and over a period of time, as I said. And this is, although uh, a new way of doing it, it's, it's a much more controlled way and it will give us, in the end, it will give us more control, uh, more information and make the whole migration procedure much smoother and uh, compared to before. So, CDM also makes it necessary to handle multiple versions of, of Yang models in your services. Uh, some examples might be your service templates or uh, perhaps your service code in the programmatic APIs like uh, Python or Java. Uh, NSO tries to take care of most of this in the background, uh, but some things need to be handled outside of the core of NSO, like if you traverse in your code over a certain path uh, that goes over the mount point, your code might need to uh, take care of this in a slightly different manner and, and make sure that we know which net ID we're talking about and, and things like that. Uh, we have helper functions uh, for the pro programmatic APIs, uh, but let's first have a look at an example in a service template. So here we have a regular service 
uh, which configures syslog on our router. And in order to uh, support provisioning this service to both uh, version 1 and version 1.1 of this router, uh, we need to handle this in the service code. So there's some new uh, template processing instructions uh, included in NSO5. So we can do the if ned id um, and then look at if the ned id equals router nc 1.0, then do this part of the configuration. Else, if we have router ID NC 1.1, then you need to provision the other part of the configuration. There's also uh, else in that sense. So here you can see because we have incompatible configuration in 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 in, in the model for 1.0, we have option PID, which is a leaf empty. Um, so we traditionally want to do just option PID slash and end that XML tag, uh, but as of upgrading to the software version 1.1, PID is no longer a leaf empty, it's actually an enumeration. Uh, so we need to change how we handle that. And we will do that with the processing instruction. So we can do if ned ID 1.0, do the regular uh, empty leaf, or if it's 1.1, do the enumeration configuration instead quite simple and when you have migrated to an or when you add a new version of a net and do a, a reload NSO will tell you also that your service need to handle this because you have some ambiguity in the configuration that needs to be handled if any part of your service is actually affected by the model change of course if not then it's all like before so in the programmatic APIs, uh, we also need to look into this. So basically the same example, but let's say you want to do it in Python. Uh, and there's a helper function included now in, in uh, NCS application called get ned ID. So you just provide the device and it will it will re return the, the ned ID. So you can do a get ned ID. And if it's uh, Apache NC 1.0, do this uh, or else if if it's 1.1, do the other part of configuration that you need to do. Uh, quite simple, uh, but something that you need to look at. Uh, and as for keeping configuration and, and, and processing instructions in templates, that's a very good approach because uh, NSO will tell you when you need to change something or if something is not correct or you need to handle different ambiguities in the models. In code, of course, uh, NSO will not uh, analyze your code, so you have to do this analysis yourself. So if your code is supposed to support multiple versions, this is something also you need to make sure it's part of your whole uh, testing suite so you can make sure that all these changes are properly handled between the different versions. Same goes for Java. Uh, so the, the, there's a uh, context class. So you have get ned ID by device name, which will give you the same information. You will get the ned ID, and you can code-wise handle the differences you have in configuration or whatever you want to do in those cases. And yeah, get ned ID by device name is part of the service context class in in Java. Um, Hopefully there's not much else you need to uh, take care of in, in your code in regards of CDM at least. So now what? Um, I would say it's, it's uh, if you're not already on NSO5, then it's probably easier than you think to, to migrate to NSO5. Um, make sure you have a, a proper test environment because that makes a huge difference in, in just migrating from NSO 4 to 5 or just the upgrading from 5.1 to 5.2, etc. Uh, some of these changes that handles different versions of NEDs, it's probably not something you need to care about. It, it's so far not as common uh, as it would make a problem for you. So it, 
even even though there are new processing instructions for for service templates and and new code you might need to take care of your old service code can probably be very easily migrated to NSO5. Uh, probably there are no changes at all that you need to do, unless you at the same time as you migrate NSO5 also start having multiple versions of something. But this is something that probably will evolve uh, in, within the scope of being in NSO5. So uh, I think look at this as something easy to achieve and in the future, a very powerful tool to handle uh, your network. Much more controlled and uh, with different versions compared to before. Thank you.